Effective parenting isn't necessarily about quantity, but quality. Ever feel like you're in a constant competition between your career and your husband's patience? Your kids think you work too hard, but hey, you're doing it all for them, right? The struggle is real, and I've been there too. Moments of feeling like a crappy mom and wife because once again, your kids had breakfast on their way to school, and you've got more important things on your plate than cooking and cleaning. Hey there, working moms who are juggling a million things and still wondering if you're doing it right. I'm Veronica Cisneros, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist a mama of three, and married for 24 years. Welcome to the Empowered and Unapologetic podcast, where we dive deep into the messy, chaotic, and sometimes hilarious world of mastering motherhood, marriage, and business. I get it. Balancing it all was never the goal, but here we are trying anyway. I'm here to share my journey and guide you through yours. No more apologies for being driven and definitely no compromises on your dreams. Together, we'll navigate the challenges of being a powerhouse in both business and family life. Join me as we tackle the uncomfortable conversations from being the breadwinner to changing the rules of what a marriage looks like. Let's figure out how to parent in a working parent household without the constant arguments or guilt. I'm Veronica Cisneros, and this is Empowered and Unapologetic, where we embrace the chaos, challenge the norms, and strive to live life on our own terms. Get ready for some real talk, actionable tips, and a few laughs along the way. Hello, and welcome to a very important episode of the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. I'm your host, Veronica Cisneros. And today we're covering a topic that is both urgent and necessary teen anxiety, and the role of parenting in navigating this crisis. As parents, it's crucial to understand how our engagement impacts our children, especially during their teenage years, which are formative and often challenging. Recent reports show a startling increase in anxiety, depression, and even suicidal thoughts among teens. Today, we'll explore what's contributing to these trends and how you as a parent can effectively support your teen. Let's start making a difference. Teen anxiety and time-efficient parenting. How are you showing up? So as a clinician, I see this often, more than I'd like to admit. There are so many teens, primarily in that 14, 13 age range, that are struggling with anxiety and usually tagged along with it is depression. And I know as parents, especially you high achieving moms, there are so many things that kind of consume our day. Not kind of, there are so many things that consume our day. And we feel like we're being an amazing mom. We feel like we are providing our children with a stable environment. We really feel like we're covering all bases. I mean, they have a childhood way better than ours, right? And so, yeah, what do our kids have to complain about? What do they have to be anxious about? I know a lot of the parents that I've met with personally in in session um, with their teens have all been in shock in regards to the level of anxiety their child is currently experiencing. And then when I add to that the amount of depression that they're battling, parents I don't want to say that they're in denial, but it's almost as if they know it's true, but there is a great amount of disbelief and they struggle with receiving this information and not with resistance. It's not that at all, but it's just trying to put this puzzle together that doesn't necessarily compute. And so first I'd like to address the landscape of teen mental health. Reports from the CDC indicate that 30% of high school girls have seriously considered suicide. 
And this number jumps dramatically among LGBTQ plus teens. These statistics aren't just numbers. They represent our children, students, and community members, our family members who are struggling. What's causing this rise? Experts point to several factors, including pressure from social media, academic expectations, and a world that often feels more uncertain than ever. But what stands out is the profound sense of isolation many teams feel, even when surrounded by others. So I know the teens that come into my office, they're already experimenting with marijuana. Um, Some of them are struggling to make friends. Some of them are, and I'm picturing them right now. Some of them are in a very chaotic household. And I'm going to cover a few of them. So let's cover the one in the chaotic household. Both mom and dad are constantly arguing. My client feels as if she has to be the mediator. Why does she feel that way? Well, because her parents will come into her room and vent and criticize their other parent. They'll criticize their partner in front of the child. And there's a bit of an expectation for the child to have an answer, for the child to validate the reasons for being upset with their partner. And so I think about this client in particular, and she has siblings. She has, and I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to give you identifiable information, but I'm, I'm just going to kind of cover the basis. She has siblings, and she does everything she can, everything she can to make sure that she doesn't cause any chaos. She struggles with school, but she won't admit it to her parents. She won't even ask them for help. So her parents think everything is fine. Everything is fine. She developed a habit of biting her nails. And what her parents didn't know was how often she was cutting. She was ashamed of this and was even afraid to admit it to me. But in our first session, she had felt safe and went ahead and shared. The amount of anxiety she experiences keeps her up at night. And although she'll fight so hard to sleep, it is in that battle that she is constantly staying awake. She's consumed with racing thoughts, constant thoughts, thoughts about how she could have done things better, thoughts about picking up her grades, thoughts about whether or not her parents are going to get a divorce, although each one has threatened it. Thoughts about whether or not she she provided her father and her mother with the proper level of support that they needed. I think of another child who struggles to make friends. They won't say anything, but they'll spend the majority of their lunch inside of a classroom. Their parents think that she's in the classroom because she absolutely loves the the teacher, but the reality is she's not sure of herself and her best friend wants nothing to do with her. So the minute she gets into the house, she creates this lie. She's afraid to open up to her parents. And one of the primary reasons she's afraid to open up to her parents is because she sees the amount of stress her mom and dad are both under. They're both working parents and there's a great amount of struggle. She reports feeling as if they are constantly in front of the computer, working. And she is very well aware that her parents send her to bed by 9 o'clock so they can continue working. She doesn't argue. She doesn't say anything at all. But her grades are starting to come down. And she's starting to struggle even more to keep it together. There are times where she wishes she can miss school, but she knows better. She knows not to burden her parents. Well, at least that's what she says. We're able to bring in her parents and we're able to have a conversation about this. And she is also able to get true healing. Her parents are also going to be a part of that healing process. If right now, as I'm speaking, maybe a picture comes up for you of either one of your kids or 
someone in the family or someone you know. I want you to leave this podcast episode truly having an understanding of what we can do, what we can all do together, which leads me to my next client. He's hysterical. He has a stay-at-home mom and a working father, a father who works. Um, His mom is extremely involved. His mom is home, making sure she makes his breakfast, lunch, uh, making sure that she does homework with him, and he struggles with marijuana use. In sports, there's a lot of self-doubt. When his parents attend his, his sporting events, it's not that they critique him, but the message he receives when they ask him, ask him questions about his performance. To him, it feels like he's being interrogated, although he would admit that's not the case and he recognizes that that's not their intention. But he really struggles with confidence and so much self-doubt. And in his attempt to lean toward and communicate with his parents, he's met with invalidation. And so he closes off and he keeps to himself. But this keeps on happening, leading him further and further away from ever wanting to say a word. So I give you guys these three examples because I want you to know, listen, not all of us are going to get it right. I should, all of us are not going to get it right. That's the truth. When I'm including me, we're not going to get it a hundred percent right. However, if I can provide you with education, if I can provide you with tools to go ahead and truly help you connect with your, with your child, well, not only are you going to develop a deeper connection, but if your child needs help, then you'll be able to provide them with the proper resources or the right experts to get them the help they need. As parents, it's challenging to find enough hours in the day. We juggle work, personal commitments, and family life, often feeling like we're spread too thin. But here's the critical question. How are you showing up for your team in these limited windows of time? I gotta admit, there are times when I literally have back-to-back Back to back, back to back meetings, sessions, um, podcast episodes, interviews, luncheons, like literally back to back. I, I have been known to go ahead and jam pack my schedule. Why? Because I want to get off early. But at the same time, when I do get off, how am I showing up as a parent? Am I intentional? Am I invested? Or am I completely depleted? If I'm attempting to be off of work and leave the office by two, the amount of work I've done from the time I started to the time I ended, did I provide myself with a reset? Did I provide myself with the ability to get to the home? I shouldn't say fully refreshed, but get to the home where I still have gas in the tank to be an exceptional version of my true self. or Am I running on fumes? Now, I have to admit, there have been plenty of times that I have been running on fumes and I just thought I could push myself. I hadn't had anything to eat. Maybe I hadn't even peed the majority of the day, nor drink water. But I show up there at two and guess what? I might as well have stayed at work. Why? Because I'm not showing up. I'm not showing up. And in addition to that, that limited window of time is all for what? Don't get me wrong. You can change this and we're going to talk about that. But I just really want to get in your heads. I really want you guys to think about this. Effective parenting isn't necessarily about quantity, but quality. Today, I'll share three time efficient strategies to connect with your team. I know looking for the right therapist can be challenging. However, feeling overwhelmed and disconnected is even harder. Life is filled with several twists and turns, some more severe than others. We do our best to handle them as they come and find ourselves at a loss, not knowing what to do or who to turn to. The clinicians here at Outside the Norm Counseling are here to help. We are here to assist you through this time of need. Together, we will identify your strengths and goals and teach you healthy coping skills. 
Together, we will develop a plan to help you live the life you want to live. Our team is compassionate, genuine, and we take a great deal of pride in providing an empathetic, non-judgmental approach to all of our clients. It's time you've waited long enough, whether it be for you, your child, or if you're in need of a couple session. We are highly trained clinicians ready to guide you. Schedule an appointment now by calling 951-395-3288. Again, that number is 951-395-3288. We're looking forward to meeting you and being a part of your journey. So first things first, validation is key. So for those of you that don't know what validation is, validation is when we provide our child with the ability to go ahead and open up and share without trying to correct them or change how they feel about the situation. It is dedicated, un- uninterrupted time to listen to your teen's concerns without judgment, without criticism, without trying to fix them. This could be done during a drive home from school, over dinner. I remember um, I remember, I was coming home one day. And I think I've shared this with you guys before. I was, I had just walked into the house and I literally walked into Willie yelling, um, Willie and Aubrey both yelling at each other. My little porcupine, my baby. And he's like, if you don't tell me you're not going anywhere. And she's like, well, I'm not going to tell you. And he's like, well, you're not going anywhere. And I'm like, shit, what did I just walk into? Can I do a redo? Can I do a redo? And just like walk out and go for another drive and let them figure this out. Obviously I couldn't. So I walked in. And they're arguing. And of course, as a mom, you want to fix the situation. You want to take away whatever they're experiencing and we want to make it better, right? And it's not, it's not to control everything. It really is. I'll tell you about it later. It's more of trying to make them all feel better. Well, at least that's a lie we tell ourselves. The reality is, We don't like this uncomfortable feeling. We're stuck in feeling as if we're out of control. And we do want to control the situation. We want to control how we feel. And we want this feeling of uncertainty to go away. So how do we go about doing it? We go about, we go about it in a very unhealthy way. We'll go about it with having our, our child, forcing our child to have a conversation with us that they're not ready to have. And then we'll automatically go straight into, well, I don't even know why you're hanging out with them. That person's a loser or, okay, maybe we're not that harsh, but you know, why are you doing that anyway? Your teacher's right. You shouldn't be doing that as opposed to really actively listening to what our child is trying to communicate with us. Kids leave breadcrumbs. They do. All of them do. Kids leave breadcrumbs. They'll give us little breadcrumbs. and. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to put it together and it's hard to figure out what do you really want? What is really going on? But how is your child going to tell you if they don't feel like they have that relationship with you? And yes, I'm not I'm not discounting the fact that you are trying. I'm not discounting that. However, could it be that your approach might be off? Could it be that you're actually pushing your child away instead of bringing them in closer? Let me give you a quick example. Imagine if you shared with me that you were struggling. You're really struggling at the office. You're struggling to connect with your team. And there's one team member in particular that just pushes your buttons. And you want to go ahead and have a great conversation with them. You want to have a great relationship with them. But, oh boy, oh boy, do they push your buttons. So you're sharing this with me. Imagine if I say, well, I mean, at least you have a job. At least you have a job. What are you feeling right now? At least you have a job. I mean, yeah, it sucks to work with them, but like you're working with them. And I mean, can you imagine trying to hire right now? It is so hard to hire. It's like ridiculously hard. It's going to take you at least like two months to replace them. And so, I mean, yeah, it sucks. But I mean, how's the rest of your staff? The rest of your staff, they're good, right? 
you probably feel invalidated. You probably feel like, did you even hear me? Or you're like, yeah, I mean, you're right. Okay, fine. Why do I even feel this way? I shouldn't feel this way. Nine times out of 10, you feel invalidated. Now imagine if I take this approach. Damn, it sounds like you're really struggling. I wonder what it's like when you're around them. Because it seems like the minute maybe you even hear their voice, it seems like you're already like getting tight and tense and anticipating, anticipating the frustration, anticipating the uncertainty, anticipating, anticipating this frustration and uncertainty, the dread. I can't imagine what that's like. Tell me more. In that moment, you probably feel seen. You more than likely feel heard. And maybe if I got it, I, I got it wrong, you'll correct me. And now you'll engage in this conversation willingly. Because you know I'm not trying to fix you. You're very much aware that I'm here to understand. And you feel validated. I'm not trying to change how you feel. I'm not trying to change your reaction to this employee. I'm not trying to fix it. I'm not trying to fix you. I'm not even saying that you're the problem. I'm not even saying that they're the problem. I am truly listening to what you have to say. And I'm providing you with the empathy and compassion that you truly desire. So now let's take a look at those three cases that I gave you earlier. What were each one of them looking for? Each one of them were looking to be seen, to be heard. One common complaint I get from kids, especially teens, is my parents are always trying to fix me. And I don't feel enough. And I already feel that way at school. And so feeling that way at home, why even interact with them? So I just stay in my room. There's work to be done, obviously. There's therapeutic work that needs to be done. But I'm able to identify what the child's needs are, what the teen's needs are through active listening, validation, and truly developing an understanding of what it must be like to live in their shoes. I'm not trying to one-up them. I'm not trying to change this feeling. I'm literally doing my best to understand what this is like. So how do we do this? Well, if you need to, schedule one-on-one -on -one time. Like, you don't have to tell them, hey, you know what? I'm going to fit you in my schedule. Obviously, do not do that. But I want you to think about like when in your day can you reserve time for your child where you guys are just having that conversation? It's uninterrupted. And you're feeling reset. You're not on fumes. You're feeling refreshed. You're feeling, you're feeling at peace. Because if you're trying to have this conversation when you're on level 1,000, I'm going to tell you right now, that conversation is going to go nowhere and your child is going to completely isolate and draw from you. And so that's what we don't want. What we do want it is to make it a regular event that they can count on, whether it's a weekly coffee date or a walk in the park. And so one thing Willie and I have done, we have done the walks. We do the walks in the park. But one thing we've done, I'm going to tell you right now, it's, it's been great. Willie actually, Willie actually did it. I'm going to give him the credit. He actually created this tin of a bunch of questions and the kids look forward to it. And anytime, um, we've had guests over, they have also asked if we can do the, if we can do the tin can with their friends and every single time, I'm telling you every single time, every single time they're all about it. So what we do is we'll go ahead and ask um, we'll go ahead and ask questions. We'll go ahead and ask questions about, um, you know, I think one of the questions is what are your thoughts on bullying? But they're like crazy deep questions and we'll have that conversation. We'll open up and that's a conversation we'll have at the dinner table. If we're not having that conversation, if the tin isn't there, um, then what we'll do is two goods and a bad. And no matter what, we're having that conversation you know, and the kids are opening up to what they're experiencing in school, challenges that they're facing, uh, maybe issues in their relationships with their friends, but like all of it gets out. Another thing that I do is um, that's been helpful because you guys all know I'm crazy busy. Another thing I've done is I've 
actually developed a routine during bedtime. I'll go to the kids' rooms and with all three of them, I'll go, go ahead and go into the kids' rooms and I'll ask if I can say a prayer to them. I cuddle up with them. I give them their kisses and then I'll pray for them. And sometimes I'll want to take the lead. And that's when the conversation starts to develop. But your kids need to know that they can count on you. And don't get me wrong. I know I'm not saying you suck as a parent. That's not what I'm saying at all. So for those of you that are going there, bring, your, bring it back. Bring it back. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is if your child is experiencing anxiety, instead of trying to fix them, let's understand what where this is coming from. And let's do this in a healthy way. You're not a bad parent. We just got to give you different strategies because maybe the ones you have aren't working for you. And I got to tell you, sometimes I have to reset my strategies because what worked with one does not work with the other ones. I have three kids, so I got to, I got to come up with different strategies. The tin though, the tin one, the tin, um, it's kind of like a bowl with a lid. Um, that right there, that, that works for all of them. And they get to pick their questions. And then we have another small tin where they put all of the questions that we've already asked. Um, and we dis- it's kind of like a disregard file. A disregard file? No. What is that called? When you not delete, trash. Oh my gosh, I'm going to stay stuck on it. You know what I mean. This is not an English class. All right. Next step. Open communication channels. Ensure your team knows they can talk to you at any time. Sometimes just leaving that door open makes all the difference. I'm going to tell you right now, I get you guys are busy. I know you're busy. I know you have so many things going on and you're trying to figure out your own time management skills. However, our kids also need us. And so being able to have that conversation, I mean, imagine when you were a kid, I'm sure you didn't bother your, your parents all the time, but the times when you really needed them. Take me through, I want you to think about this. Take me through the time that you really, really needed them and the door was closed. I don't think we had laptops back in the day, but maybe they were working, but they were too busy for us. They were too busy for us. What was that feeling like for you? Were you eager to tell your parents after feeling rejected? Probably not. Who did you end up telling? The boyfriend? that would probably emotionally abuse you, the best friend that would constantly cross you and share your secrets, who would you share these things with? Or was it no one? And you just slowly allowed it to build. Addressing barriers to effective parenting. Let's talk about what might be, what might be holding you back from showing up fully. Marity, parents struggle with their own stresses or might not understand what the depth of their teens experiences are. There's also the challenge of navigating when to step in and when to give space, which can be particularly tricky with teens pushing for independence. I know there've been times where my daughter's been like, dude, I just need a moment. And it's like, okay, well, I'm here. Or they'll come up to me and they're like, mom. Okay. I've learned to ask them, okay, hold on. Before we continue, is this something you want my feedback on? Or is this something you just want to vent? And usually they'll start with, I just want to vent. And then they'll go into, can you give me feedback? And because we've developed that relationship, now my kids will say, okay, I need relationship advice, like therapeutic relationship advice. Like I need you to give me the best. Or mom, here, it's Samantha. She needs help. And it's like, okay, that right there. Now I know more or less that what type of conversation this is and how to address it. Listen, it's okay to seek help if you're feeling overwhelmed. Parenting a teen through anxiety isn't something you have to do alone. Resources like therapy, parenting groups, or even books can offer guidance and support. I have known so many high achieving women who have been afraid to bring their child, their children into therapy. And I have had friends who have said, Veronica, can I, can I talk to you? And it's like, yeah, sure. 
or can I take you out to dinner? And it's like, yes, of course. And all of a sudden the conversation goes into their child and what they're experiencing, or it'll go into their marriage or it'll go into maybe things that they're experiencing. And I have a conversation with them. Well, has your child asked for therapy? Well, yeah. Okay. So what was your response? I mean, I don't even think they need it. Listen, homegirl, if your child is asking for therapy, get them to therapy ASAP, especially if they're asking, because there might be things that you don't know. And I obviously say that with the utmost respect, but I got to, I got to be honest. There are probably things maybe I don't even know. And so why not? If your child is asking for help, why not give them the resources they need to go ahead and live the life they want to live? It is so important. I've had so many parents that I've had to have a come to Jesus conversation with because their child was struggling with depression for over a year and the parents did not know. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the parents didn't even know their child was cutting, had no clue. Kids get creative when they have to. To bring our discussion to life, let's hear some success stories from parents who have navigated these waters successfully. They've implemented the strategies and not only helped their teens cope with anxiety, but also strengthen their relationship. I think about one of them in particular. Um, she came in um, and she knew that her daughter was struggling with making friends. And she just thought that her daughter was an introvert. Um, but she also started to see a difference in her daughter. She wasn't so active. She wasn't really engaging in hobbies. And so she started to go into her room and just check on her. And whenever she would go into her room, her daughter would be up. And her daughter wasn't even on the cell phone. Her daughter was just up. And so she kissed her goodnight, went back, checked on her again because it just started to bother her. Went to her room again, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, daughter's still up. She noticed that there was this pattern and she asked her daughter, Hey, is everything okay? And the daughter didn't have the words to go out and explain what was going on. So her reply, she would reply with, I don't know. I don't know. This frustrated the mother so much because it's like, how do you not know? Like, just tell me, tell me what you need. I don't know. Okay. Well, you don't know. Well, then you're not going anywhere until you do know nothing. Mom just felt like something was off, brought her into therapy. And in that one session, the therapist, me, was able to develop a true understanding of what was going on. So we started working together. I would bring mom in after the fourth session, would bring mom in and dad in, start to teach mom and dad skills. Because again, the goal is not to make any one of my patients, any one of my clients dependent on me start to teach them skills, provide them with more and more skills. And then slowly the child was able to go ahead and voice what was going on for her. She had the vocabulary. She was able to have these conversations, have these really uncomfortable conversations with her parents. She was able to set boundaries with her friends. She was able to set boundaries with boyfriends. She was able to go ahead and communicate what she was experiencing. She was able to self-regulate. She was able to set healthy boundaries. She was able to enjoy her life, no longer being a prisoner. And the beautiful thing about this is she was able to do this without medication. And don't get me wrong, that's not the case for everybody. There are times when the depression has gone for so long and therapy on its own isn't enough, that's when we start to have the child or teen assess for the need um, for po you know possible medication. And again, I, I definitely provide referrals and so does my team. But as we wrap up today's episode, remember that your presence has a profound impact on your teen's mental health. The steps we've discussed today are not just theoretical, they are practical and actionable. If your teen is struggling or if you feel out of your depth as a parent, reach out to us here at Outside the Norm Counseling. We're happy to support you and your family through these challenging times. 
I have a therapist that specializes in teen and child therapy. She also specializes in play therapy. I have another therapist that specializes in trauma therapy. I have another therapist who specializes in, you know, college prep, right? Prepping adulthood, right? Going from being in home to now living on campus. We do have a very, very strong team, a team that works with, you know, addiction and specializes in addiction. We are a full service team to truly help your family. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You're doing more than just listening. You're taking the first step towards becoming the supportive anchor your team needs. Until next time, keep striving to be the best parent you can be, not the perfect one. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. I'm here with you. Thank you. Raise your hand if you are ready to level up your marriage for 2023. Do you find that you're spending your time together with your husband, checked out, and in front of the TV? I know you're ready for tangible strategies that actually get you results. Reignite the spark in your marriage, have fun, and grow together. Well, I hope you have your hand raised at this minute because I have something special for you. I'm introducing my brand new six question marriage predictor quiz that's going to give you personalized results to catapult you into the next stage of your marriage journey. That means you'll receive the results to where your marriage can get the best help. If you've got just one minute, head to veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. Again, that's veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. And you could take my brand new quiz, Marriage Predictor. Get your results delivered right to your email address. Again, that's veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. veronicacisneros.org forward slash quiz. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends.